Now the reason why I'm filling the tanks up today, quite a small pump for what it can do. So here are my existing microcontrollers for the two DCP 15,000 litre per hour pumps. And here's the new one, the DCP 8000. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing part one of connecting the brand new five foot aquariums from this side of the fish room to my sump system on this side of the fish room. In the video, I'll also be showing you guys the new return pump I'm going to be using to power the two five foot aquariums. So let's get into this week's video. EVC is still curing on some of the plumbing, but I wanna to start to fill these up now just below the bulkhead so they're pretty much ready to go once the PVC has fully cured in another few days. So we're gonna be filling up the middle tank and the top tank. Again, we're leaving the bottom tank for a number of months because they're not hooking that up to the sump system. And the plumbing, again, is a temporary measure to the other side of the fish room. Eventually, the whole uh, wall on this side of the fish room will be plumbed up together on a sump system of its own. So again, I'm just gonna be filling them up and uh, they'll be ready to go once the PVC cement has fully cured. Now, I'll just quickly mention the lights on these tanks uh, they're four foot long and these are five foot long aquariums. So I'm just sitting them on the center brace just so you can see uh, the footage because I don't actually have lights for these tanks yet. I'm debating whether to get uh, actual LED lights for, the, for all three or use um, LED spotlights that I'll bolt to the undersides of the stands. I'm gonna turn the hose on and start filling the tanks up. Now the reason why I'm filling the tanks up today and not waiting until the PVC is fully cured is because I'm actually doing a water change. The hoses are in uh, the fish room. I'm doing water changes on all the tanks in the fish room. So I figured while the hoses are in here, I may as well fill them up uh, part way to the bulkhead. So that is why I'm doing it today and not waiting to completely fill them up and then test the PVC cement uh, job that I've done on my plumbing uh, later on a later date because Got the hoses in here now, I may as well um, treat the water that's in here with um, Tanganyika Rift Lake salt and buffers to make the pH higher and make the water hard because my water is quite soft where I am in Sydney. So uh, that is the point of filling them up today, get that water ready to go. Then when I'm ready to test the PVC uh, cement job I've done on my plumbing, I'll finish filling them up and that shouldn't take any time at all because I just have to raise the water level just above the bulkhead and that will complete the circuit uh, from this side of the fish room to my sump system on the other side of the fish room. Also, uh, you may or may not have noticed that you can't see the polystyrene underneath the tanks anymore. Uh, I've put black electrical tape on the bottom of the tank just to, sew, just to hide that white line and uh, just to make it a little bit more neater. So the tanks are filling up. I know these guys don't leak. I've already done tests on them. Uh, if you haven't seen that video where I tested uh, the tanks and unfortunately uh, something did happen in one of those tanks, you can watch the video right here. Uh, the bottom tank, if you watch that video, you find out what I did with that one. Okay, the tank is almost filled to the bottom of the bulkhead. I'm about to stop it and to, I'm gonna switch the hose over to the top tank. So I'm gonna do that now. Just crimp the hose. It slows the water down. Pop your hose in the next tank and you can see it's as easy as that. Hardly any splashing and we're done. And these clamps, hopefully you can see them on camera, are invaluable in the fish room. Hold down hoses for you while you're doing water changes and whatnot. They are an essential item in the fish room when you are running multiple tanks, I highly recommend you get those hose clamps. These are the Irwin brand, pretty expensive, uh, but they're so strong the hose uh, will not budge with that clamp. I've got some cheapo uh, clamps from reject stores and whatnot. They do do the job, but sometimes I need two, sometimes even three of those cheapo clamps to hold the hose in position, depending on where the hose is in the fish room. I've added a cheap internal power filter what I'm gonna be doing now is putting the Tanganyika Reflex Salt into this aquarium. And I'm gonna add another cheapo internal filter uh, on the top tank as well, because we're gonna be adding the same buffer to that aquarium. And the reason why I'm adding the internal power filter is just to keep flow going, to dissolve the salts as much as possible. I'll also put in some prime to dechlorinate the water. 
And because this internal power filter has filter matting in it uh, from my water change reservoirs, it will add as some biological filtration and it will capture and detoxify the ammonia and nitrites in this water. So I've added one capful. These tanks hold about 240 liters full to the top, uh, but they're not full to the top. And that's why I've added a capful of the prime. And now I'll add some of this buffer and you're gonna see the water get extremely cloudy, but that's all right. So the internal power filter will keep circulating this water around. This buffer will eventually dissolve into the water column and it'll be fine. You can see it's kind of settled on the bottom of the tank. Absolutely fine. These tanks aren't going to be uh, stocked with fish for a number of days. So there is some time for this uh, buffer reflex salt to dissolve in the water column. So I'm going to do the same to the top tank. So um, that's added in. I'll add in some prime, a cap full for about 200 liters. Anyway, the top tank is looking almost full and popping an internal power filter in this aquarium as well. So all in all, this is how I'm getting these tanks ready. And hopefully, fingers crossed, my uh, plumbing job is good and holds water and is watertight. Because I really don't want to be cutting up PVC sections out and um, redoing anything. I need to get these tanks uh, running so I can pop my fry in these grow out aquariums. So the top tank is full to the bottom of the bulkhead. So I'm gonna pop in the internal power filter for that aquarium. Okay, water is now flowing in the top tank as well as the middle tank. That Rift Lake salt buffer should dissolve into the water column, become soluble over the next 24 hours. Again, I've got some time before I add some fish to this and that's why I'm doing it now uh, rather than on the day that I wanna add the fish. It hasn't been even 24 hours yet uh, before the PVC fully cures on some sections of the PVC. Uh, the majority of it is fully cured. However, there is two joins that I had to do in the past 24 hours to complete the whole system. So uh, it's not ready to have water flow through the entire uh, circuit yet. So I'll be waiting until uh, this time tomorrow afternoon and uh, testing it out. So the PVC cement that I've got uh, it cures within 24 hours for testing, so uh, it's, it's pretty much good to go. It is the PVC cement that's rated for high pressure systems. So none of this is under high pressure. It's just water that's gonna be flowing out of the tanks and into the sump. The return line that's gonna be flowing water into the tanks is gonna be one length of clear vinyl hose flowing water into the top tank and uh, from the sump, and then it will drain from this tank into the middle tank and then via PVC plumbing back to the sump. That's how the system will work for a number of months. So there we go guys, both tanks full. And here is the pump I'll be using to filter two of the five foot aquariums. Eventually it will be used to filter all the aquariums on that side of the fish room, a total of 15 aquariums when I hook them up to my sump system, to the brand new sump system. That will mean in my fish room, I use three pumps to filter 35 aquariums, which is pretty good. What I've gone for here is the DCP 8000 made by GBAO. Um, it is commonly available on eBay. A pretty cheap pump, but more than capable of uh, filtering those aquariums as I've learned with the two existing GBAO pumps that I have in my fish room. The current ones that I have powering the 20 tanks on the other side of my fish room are the 15,000 liter per hour models. Uh, I've learned from them that this model will be more than capable of lifting water uh, to the top rack of aquariums in my fish room. Uh, with a head height of 5.2 meters. Uh, it's pretty power efficient as well, running at 65 watts. I won't be running it at that. Uh, I'll be running it at a lower uh, output because I'm only at the moment gonna be filtering two five foot aquariums. Uh, however, once I connect it to all 15 aquariums on that side of the fish room, I'll have to increase the power, but it will be more than capable to filter all those aquariums. Now, I'm saying it eventually in the future, it's gonna power 15 aquariums. I am still unsure, however, of the sump system design that I'm gonna run with 
on that side of the fish room. I might have to forego two aquariums on the bottom rack for simplicity in the design and maybe run those two aquariums independently or use them for Daphnia culture. Uh, I'm not sure, just because they are so low on the fish room floor. Uh, the sump will sit a little bit lower than them and for ease of uh, the plumbing design, I might just have to forego hooking them into the sump system, but we'll see. I have a couple ideas in my, in my mind, uh, conceptually, that they could potentially work, but I'm not sure if I will run with that. However, uh, for the time being, like I said, this pump will uh, just power two five-foot aquariums. So I'm gonna show you what's inside the box now. I have opened it up, spoiler alert. We've got a power cord, your power cord in your neck of the woods uh, might be a little different. This is an Australian power cord, so that's perfect. Uh, some filters that you get that are cheap off eBay come with a, an adapter that you have to plug into, and uh, that adapter is subtypes quite loose, so I don't like that. But uh, with this pump, you come, it comes with the proper adapter hooked into the cord. We've got the microcontroller itself. In here, is the other length of cord with the transformer. So we've got our transformer here, and we've got the little jack here, and that plugs into this port on the microcontroller. The microcontroller then connects to the pump via this cable that has some watertight seals on it and that you screw in. This will be going nowhere near the water. Uh, so it just basically plugs in, you can only plug it in one way. It's got a notch cut out for it and then you screw that on, making a seal. So I haven't screwed it on properly yet. This will be screwed onto my stand for the time being, and uh, I'll have it displayed there next to the other microcontrollers that are in my fish room. So let's have a look at the actual pump. So I'll just disconnect this quickly. And there's the actual pump. Just increase the exposure so you can see it a bit better. So it comes with this little guard to uh, make sure no debris is gonna go into the impeller and stop the pump from working. So that's a good little guard there. And I'll just keep that on like that. And you can see the diameter of the outlet for this pump. So quite large. With the pump, you also get a bag of accessories that you can use to connect to different diameter hoses. Now I've already picked out the one I'll be using and it's gonna be this one. So this is gonna to connect to my 25 millimeter diameter vinyl tube. So it's gonna sit like that. In here we have the, the lockdown nut for that and that will sit. This screws down onto that piece like you see there and that locks it in position and my vinyl tube will connect to this. The vinyl tube is one length of hose that will run all the way to the top of the first five foot aquarium on the top row and uh, pump water. No joins in that vinyl hose. It will just go directly from here into the aquarium. So that's the pump there. Quite a small uh, pump for what it can do. Uh, very compact. And I like that because I you know, want to um, not take up too much room in the sump, even though I've got a load of space in there. So what I'm going to do now is connect this pump to my vinyl tubing and run that through to the top tank, the top five foot aquarium, and then we should be good to go. The one thing you need to know is do not let the cable go into the water. So I'm gonna unfurl this cable uh, and run it to my power supply and to the microcontroller, which is over there, and uh, then I'll put the pump in the water get this in the water and that won't be good. <laughs> You'll have to let it dry out and hopefully then it will work, but we're gonna avoid that from happening. So let's get it sorted. So here's the vinyl tubing I'll be using. Just trying to straighten it up as much as I can. Uh, it was wound up quite tightly uh, in my shed. So I'll be using this. So just using some bricks to straighten it out as much as I can. Now, I'm wondering how did I measure the distance that I needed, the length that I needed for this uh, vinyl tubing because this is 25 mil uh, wide and it is uh, quite a rigid piece of vinyl tubing. So I used just some cord, just some paracord. Um, I measured the distance using this. So uh, basically uh, placed a rock in front of the sump and ran it to the five foot tank uh, via my intended uh, 
route that I'm gonna that I intend to use this final tubing for. So simple, uh, it's just some cord. Uh, if you don't have any cord, uh, so string or um, airline hose, something spare in the fish room. If you try to if you're trying to do this, just to easily measure out the, the length that you need uh, for something like this. So that's what I did. So here are my existing microcontrollers for the two DCP 15,000 litre per hour pumps. And here's the new one, the DCP 8000. The first thing you notice is that the buttons are switched around. The feed mode or pause button is on the left for the DCP 15,000s. Uh, but for the DCP 8000, it's on the right. <clears throat> Apart from that, everything else looks the same. Uh, it's a smaller control box, obviously for a smaller pump. Uh, the other thing though I did notice, I should point out, is the differences in the connection. So this is the connection going to the transformer on the DCP uh, 15000s. And this is, the con this is the adapter for the 8000. It's just a simple jack. It doesn't have a screw on attachment. Uh, on either of the cords. So uh, it's a slight difference. This one, uh, these cords, I guess they're uh, not even really that much of a thicker gauge. They seem to be the same, uh, but they screw in to the, the boxes and on the 8000 they don't. So you might be, want to be careful of this little uh, jack uh, from popping out. So just something to be mindful of with the DCP8000. Uh, the DCP 15,000s do have that sort of jack, but it's more robust and uh, more sturdier. It doesn't feel as um, loose in the socket as this one does. So I'll have to keep my eye on that. Because if that comes out, obviously the powers of the, the pump is going to switch off and uh, the tank uh, won't have any flow, which would harm the fish. So uh, I'll just have to be mindful of that. So anyway, what have we got? We've got the pump in the sump. Doesn't look pretty, but it's in the sump with the clear vinyl hose. It runs through the back of the tanks. Again, those look pretty, but I've tried to make this as neat as possible. Again, this is a temporary measure, and then it dumps water out at the top of the tank. This is quite rigid. It can't come out uh, with the force of water coming out of this pipe. Now, the pipe isn't in the water because this tank is gonna fill up, obviously. And what I don't want to happen is if power was to cut, if I was to have a blackout in the fish room, I don't want water siphoning out of this tank back, too much water, back flowing into the sump because then the sump could potentially flood. Normally on my uh, return lines I have check valves, uh, but I don't have a check valve on this line. So this is gonna be kind of sticking out of the water, uh, splashing around water, and uh, that will be obviously aerating the water as well as uh, preventing too much water backflowing if there was to be a power outage to my sump. Now, the big moment has come to turn the pump on and to see if my plumbing has been glued together correctly. So there you have it guys, part one of connecting the two brand new fish tanks to my sump system. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.